Hey everyone and welcome back. So I wanted to take a little bit of a break from all of the Colorado content that I've been posting as well as a whole slew of other videos that I still have backlogged on various content from the past couple of months uh, to go back and revisit a topic that I talked about over six months ago on this channel because I have some news to update and I think it's worth revisiting this topic. Now before I get into it, I will say, since I got back from Colorado, this happened, uh, which has been less than pleasant, I will say. I have essentially been quarantined to this room for the past week, waiting to test negative and dealing with some pretty bad symptoms uh, despite my vaccination status and everything that I've done right to keep myself safe and protected. Uh, it hit me pretty bad. Um, so I won't get into it other than to say I'm finally coming out of the fog and uh, hopefully we'll get caught up on a lot of things that have since backlogged themselves over these past seven days. So with that out of the way, I did want to go back and revisit a video that I made back on Groundhog Day. And I specifically remember it was Groundhog Day uh, because I joked about the goofy holiday. It's February 2nd, so here in the United States, that means it's Groundhog Day. So here in the United States, it means it's Groundhog Day. See what I did there? <laughs> and also because I took out the scooter for a early season uh, shakedown ride the scooter that has now since moved on to a new owner. Now the topic that I'm referring to is a topic that's very prevalent, especially amongst the research world and the academic world, and it's a topic called imposter syndrome. And I spent quite a bit of time talking about this in that video because I had been spending every night, several hours a night, uh, locked in this very room working on a very important science proposal uh, and the reason that this proposal was so important is not just because the research is important at least I think it's important but because this was my first lead authored primary National Science Foundation proposal that I had put together uh, and also because this particular proposal, should it be funded, would fund uh, my very first graduate student. So there was a lot of pressure on me uh, to write a good proposal. And this was my first real stab at proving to myself that I could explain my science, I could propose good science, and successfully fund myself and that is a hard thing to do uh, especially when more senior scientists have been helping mentor you along and providing guidance uh, all throughout the years to all of a sudden be presented with a situation where you have to put together a fundamental science proposal essentially on your own. Now that's not to say I didn't consult with some of my former mentors, um, but that interaction was very different than it has been historically. You know, historically I would write something and send it to one of my advisors or uh, committee members and they would essentially make it better. You know, give me comments, red pen it, uh, off the charts and I would go back and rework it. Whereas this time was the first time I felt like my consult with those former mentors, collaborators was more of peer to peer, uh, sort of on equal ground. And so instead of red penning my text and simply correcting it, uh, all I got was some sort of basic suggestions of ways to possibly improve tax or maybe reword things, but very different from just going in and changing stuff. And so there was a lot of pressure on me to get it right myself. And uh, this is where uh, I got into 
uh, the imposter syndrome because this was the first time as a as a professional researcher uh, as a professional academic where uh, it was all on me you know not only was the science on me but I had all that pressure knowing that if this did not get funded my graduate student would be forced to spend several semesters TAing classes to support themselves and uh, to cover her um, tuition and, and health insurance and all that and so I really really wanted to um, get this funding not only for the science but also for my student and also um, you know because I'm early career any sort of funding that I can bring into the university certainly builds my CV and helps with my career packet so there was a lot of pressure and um, the short story there is that uh, somewhere in the middle of writing that proposal I was overcome with a sense of uh, imposter syndrome and I felt like what I was writing was absolute garbage that I didn't know what I was talking about and uh, I really doubted myself and I started to wonder if all this time, all this training, all of my time in graduate school through my doctoral program uh, that I was really just riding on the coattails of my more senior committee members and really uh, I was just parroting them and that they were the ones that had all the good ideas. Uh, and I, I convinced myself uh, over several days that I was wasting my time, this proposal was never going to be funded, that uh, I really didn't know what I was talking about, and uh, how did I ever get through my graduate program. It got pretty bad. I got pretty down on myself. Um, even though I knew what was happening and I knew that I was, I was being overcome by imposter syndrome, I still let it happen. And uh, it's sort of a self-fulfilling, you know, uh, vicious cycle because as it happens, you just keep doubting yourself more and more and more and it's a feedback. Uh, so somewhere through that process, I almost gave up and almost just decided not even to submit the proposal. Uh, and it's hard too because the Science Foundation has moved to a model where instead of there being discrete deadlines for, for proposal submission, which gives you sort of a hard deadline to work towards, they've now left everything open-ended. So it's on you to motivate yourself to actually get something submitted. And with no deadline, that can be really hard because it's like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And so I had to impose a deadline on myself and make myself believe that it was a hard deadline. So I, I gave myself a deadline of January 31st um, and ultimately I was a little late. I got it in on the 1st of February, uh, but it was done. It was done on the 31st. I just had to go back and tweak a few things to get it in uh, and submitted. But I did get it submitted on February 1st and uh, when I submitted it, I remember thinking that it was a long shot and I truly did not believe, uh, still did not believe that I was going to get funded. Um, but then something happened and that was um, when it was all said and done and I had proofread it a hundred times, I sent the full proposal to my former advisor and for the very first time in ever working with my former advisor, I got a response back with one simple comment and all it said was this is an excellent proposal you should be proud of what you've put together and of course my first response at seeing that was you know he's just trying to flatter me he's just trying to talk me up so that I feel better about myself um, but ultimately after some serious reflection you know I, I thought that no, this, this is someone that I trust uh, inherently and that has never BS'd me before. And so I decided to take it as uh, truth that he really did believe that I wrote a good proposal. 
And so I kind of just washed my hands of it and said, well, you know, this was the best I could do, best I could put together, and so be it, whatever happens. So the very next day I went into lab group meeting with all the graduate students and I told them the story of what happened and I said, listen guys, there's going to come a point in your graduate schooling or in your career where you're forced to sort of do something that requires a lot of brain power and it really requires you to tap into all of your training and all of your research and all of your knowledge and write something very technical uh, that taxes you and puts you to your very limit and you are going to inevitably feel like you are an imposter and that you are not good enough to put that together and I just want you all to know that that's A, okay, it's going to happen and B, it happens to everyone including faculty members like me so they really appreciated that honesty and uh, I, a lot of people came up to me after the lab group meeting and just said thank you for sharing that story because uh, it makes me feel much better about uh, the doubts that I've been having, including my own grad student. So why am I bringing all this up right now? Well, I'm bringing it up because two nights ago I received an email from the National Science Foundation letting me know that they have decided to fund my proposal. So this is a huge deal for me, very exciting, it's very validating. Uh, after all those doubts and all those questions that I had, uh, NSF reviewed my proposal. Very smart people reviewed my proposal, very critical people and decided that even though only 10 to 20% of these proposals get funded, that what I wrote, what I proposed was worthy of funding from the National Science Foundation. Now I'm telling you this not to brag at all, not to toot my own horn in any way. I'm telling you this because I'm trying to relay that hard work, tenacity, and trusting in your training and in your knowledge pays off. If you believe in your training and in the research that you're doing and you know that you've done everything you can to explain it and to propose it scientifically, accurately, and soundly, and rigorously, right? That's the point of science to be rigorous, then there's a really good chance that people will recognize that and will fund you or will recommend your work to, to move on to the next phase. And so I just wanted to pass that along to all of you out there. Whatever it is that you do, whether it's science or healthcare or IT or sociology or whatever, photography, art, music, doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you are doing, your passion, your career, and you have one of these situations where you're doubting yourself, stop, take a deep breath, remember your training, remember all the things that you went through to get to where you are, and push on and believe in yourself. And I know this sounds like a total like Tony Robbins motivational seminar, but this is proof uh, that if you dedicate yourself to your training and to putting in the hard work, just like if I was training for a hard ultra marathon, if I put in the work and I put in the knowledge there's a good chance that things will come out okay. So, so that's all. Uh, I just wanted to pass that news along that I did get my science funded. I'm very excited. My student will now have two semesters of support uh, to work on all of her new research. 
Um, we're going to be able to go to very important conferences and we're going to be able to pay for the equipment that we need and it's just it's all very exciting and I know I don't talk about my work very much on this channel but uh, I couldn't help but share this news so at any rate I'm going to uh, go rest for a bit because I'm still recovering from this stupid friggin virus um, and then uh, get back to work. So thanks everybody for following along. And I will get some more content, some more fun adventure content uploaded shortly. So take care, be safe, and do good science. I'll see you guys in the next video.